Classic Couriers is a light strategic game for two to four players, where each player plays a bicycle courier in the 19th century, delivering any items that cross their path, while trying to maximize their profit from delivering multiple items at the same time. Planning your moves and being efficient is a vital skill as it is all about profit at the end of the delivery day. In Classic Couriers, you will get 60 item cards that look like so. You will also get four different bicycle cards. These are the player cards. You, you will also get four player aids, like so. You will get a end tracker that looks like so. Five different zone cards. A east west indicator. Five discs and five different cubes with the same color. Two dice. On these dice, the number six has a panda on it. Look like so. And a panda meeple. This is the dispatcher. So whenever you see a panda, consider it as a dispatcher. To set up a game of classic carriers, first give each player a bicycle of their choice. We will set up a two player game over here. Secondly, shuffle the item cards and put them within reach of all players. Take the five zone cards, shuffle them up, and place them on the table randomly. Now orient them from 1 to 5, like so. Then place the east and west card by the fifth number, like so. Take the five discs, shake them up and place them on the table and randomly distribute them on the five zone cards. The place you put them is the uh, red dot on each zone card. Like so. Place the end tracker where everyone can see it. Take the five squared cubes and place them on the zero zone on the end tracker, like so. Give each player three cards and a player aid and the panda meeple. Roll one dice. Look at what the number is and place the panda meeple beside that zone number. You are now ready to play a two-player game of Classy Carriers. To begin the game, the player who most recently rode a bike gets to be the starting player. Each time someone does their turn and end it, the player to the left then starts their turn. Let's say I rode my bike yesterday, and I'm the starting player. On my turn, I start off with rolling dice. I, after, play cards into my east or west side of the bike, which is determined by the zone. I may then score the sides that I have, or the items that I have in my east and west side. And after I've done that, if I wanted to do it, I finish it off by replenishing my hand. So let's talk about the first step, dispatching. So dispatching is rolling the dice. When you get a double, 
what happens is that the panda goes to that number. That is one of the scenarios. When you get a panda and a number, what happens is that you move the numbered zone, the disk, so this is zone 2, you move the disk clockwise. Clockwise according to this over here. So over here it goes from the red dot to the black dot right over so. And now suddenly the red disk is on the west side over here. The panda moves one value higher. If you roll a panda on the 5, the panda moves all the way down to number 1. When you roll two different numbers, those two disk zones, or the disks in that zone, move clockwise. So number 1 and number 5, like so. If you roll double pandas, what happens is that the active player gets to place the panda anywhere on the zone of their choice. So I want to place it, let's say, over at number 2. Like so. so once you've done the dispatching phase, so rolling once and doing the outcome, you now go into the item selection. So I'm going to show you my hand over here, and I have a blue 3, a number 2 red, and a number 2 black. So the reason that I placed the panda on number 2 is that I have a lot of number 2 cards and wherever the panda stays becomes a wild card for cards that I can play. So I can play any red cards or I can play any number 2 cards. And that's what the panda dictates. It dictates what zone becomes the, the wild card. So over here this would mean that you can play any number 4s or any yellow cards. So it was on number 2 like so. We're going to look into my hand, and the first card that you play is dictated by all of the discs. So you can choose one of the zones, and that disc will dictate one of the cards that you play. And when a disc is on the red dot, you can play it on either side. So it's on the ledge of the east and west. So I'm going to play this blue card on my west side, like so. Because the blue disc is on the red dot, or the divide of east and west, this means that I can choose what side I want to place it on. Now that I've placed my first card, I go over to the panda wild card placements. So I can place any number of cards that are dictated by the panda. So right now, I actually want to place both of my cards, so I'm going to play these two cards on my east side, like so. That would end my item selection phase. So now it's the item completion phase. On this phase, I can choose to complete the jobs that I have built up on my bike over here. However, there is a specific chart for scoring that determines how many cards you can score away. And right now, I'm not hitting that many of the criteria, so I would rather wait a bit to score more. And the uh, criteria are if you have between 0 and 3 cards on both the west and east side, you get to put away 0 cards. If you have between 4 and 6 cards, you can put away 1 card. If you have 7 plus cards, you can put away two cards. Now there are some bonus rates too, so if the uh, east side and west side is balanced, then you get plus one. And what does balanced mean? Balanced means when the two numbers are equal to each other, the sum of the two sides. So right now, over here, we have a total of four, and on this side we also have a total of four. So this would be equal, and it would allow me to get the plus one for the balanced rate. Now we got the same color bonus rate. So here it says same color times three equals plus one. So if I have on one side the same color like whoop, let's swap these out. 
like these three yellows over here, I suddenly get a plus one to my cards that I can score away. If I had three blues on this side, I would get plus two. So I would have the yellow side that gives me plus one, and then I would have the blue side that gives me plus one. So in this scenario over here, I do want to score it. So I do the item completion phase. So the way you score it is that you now count up how many cards you can bank away. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five cards. So I'm between four and six, so I can bank away one card. Is it balanced? I have four and I have five, six, seven, so it's not balanced. And I have three of the same color on on the east side over here. So I can bank away two cards in total. One for it being five cards over here, and one for it having three of the same color. So now I look at both of my sides, and I always have to bank away the topmost cards. So one thing that I could do is I could bank away this two over here, and this other two to get four. That's quite nice. I could also bank away this one over here, and bank away a two, that would be less. So it's re uh, very important to uh, just evaluate your situation to see how you get maximum points, because you always have to take cards from the top. Let's say I flipped it over like this. Suddenly, I have the three in the middle over here. Now it would be advantageous to take from the right side because these two cards give me five points more than this side over here, which would give me four points more than one of each side, which would give me three points. So be on the lookout to see how you can maximize your profits by placing the higher cards last. So once you have taken the cards that you've completed away, you look at the color and you move the cube on the end tracker that many spaces up, like so. So I move the yellow cube twice because I scored away two cards. When two of these markers are at the end stage, like so, what happens is that the person who initiated the end game does not get another turn, but everyone else around the table gets one more turn. And after that, you see how many cards you've scored, and your final score is then tallied up, and you see who has the most points. So once you have scored away cards, you put them right underneath your bicycle face down, so no one can see how many points you have. The cards that were not scored, go into the discard pile, right by the draw deck. Now, when you've done the item completion phase, you look and see how many cards you have in your hand, because now you want to do the replenish phase to draw more cards. If you have between one and five cards, you draw two cards from the deck, like so. And this becomes your hand for your next turn. Now, if you had zero cards in your hand, you would draw three cards. So it's beneficial to uh, finish up your hand to then draw more cards, but sometimes it's smarter to save up and just wait a bit. If you also have more than five cards in your hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, at the end of your turn you have to discard down to five. So I'm going to discard this over here. Once you have replenished your hand, the next player to your left goes, and play continues until two cubes have come all the way up on the end tracker, triggering the end round. The end round, the player who triggered the end round does not get one more turn, however everyone else around the table gets to do their turn. The person with the highest score in their stash over here is the winner. So everyone flips over their stash and counts their points. So right now I have five points in my stash over here. And that is Classic Couriers. Uh, you can find the print and play below in the description. 
The components are quite easy to replicate, so you can just take them from any board game as long as they have five different colors and you have a set of two. And uh, yeah, just get a regular D6, so use the number 6 for the panda face. And use just any meeple or uh, kind of like token that you have to replicate the dispatcher. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you guys liked the game. It has uh, been a fun 30 days to make this game, and I hope that anyone who plays it enjoys it and maybe even gives feedback below in this video because the game is always changing, and uh, until it's actually published, I would love to just keep on working on it here and there just to improve it even more. I'm quite happy with the stage that it is in right now, but we'll see what happens. Feedback is a powerful thing, so take care guys.